Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be talking about five Mac apps that are my favorite. Uh, more importantly, that I can't really live without. Um, you know, I can make this list 10, 20 apps long because the way I use my laptop or any computer for that matter is I set a task for that computer or, or sorry, I set kind of like a use case for that computer and I only put the apps I need for that. So for the laptop, it's professional productivity sort of focused. I do have a gaming PC, that one's strictly for games. So there's no like cross between it. Everything's minimal. Everything I put on it is intentional to that use. So that's that's what I how I function with, with my devices. Even with my phone, it's bare minimum. There's nothing on there that I don't really use. Anyways, so back to the video. Only five back to the point of the video. Five Mac apps I can't live without. Now these are apps that I use both, you know, some sort of recreationally and but all of them are used professionally. So uh, and what I mean by professionally is my freelance photography business or kind of a side thing like YouTube or Instagram or uh, you know any other sort of online presence. So let's get to the list here. I have my laptop here and I got my little list. I'm just going to be going off the cuff explaining what I like about it. Uh, you know a lot of them are preferences and I know that uh, a considerable amount of you have heard about like three, four of these very popular apps, but this is just what I can't live without. So, you know, if they're widely adopted apps, I'm going to be using them and then they become a part of my life. So these aren't really, you know, original finds, but I'm going to be explaining them. And if there's some on there that you haven't heard of, or you don't know how they work or whatever, here's a good sort of demo video to help you understand and, uh, maybe figure out how you would use these in your life. So the first one I'm going to be discussing is my preferred email client. That one is Spark. I don't know if you've ever heard of Spark. I know a lot of you, you know, w looking for an alternative email client. I don't like the Apple one, so I don't really use it. Um, I know that it is very popular and a lot of people like it. But if you're going to be searching for an email client, you'll just search up email in the Mac App Store. Um, and this one is probably going to pop up. So it's a very popular email app. I love the design of it. It's very simple. It's very functional in terms of creating folders, dragging stuff in there, archiving. It's all very easy. It's a very streamlined thing. Of course, there's Google Calendar or I use it with Google. I'm sure it would support other email uh, client calendars or email provider calendars like Yahoo. I'm sure they have a calendar, stuff like that. I have a few favorited folders here where I can have my completed projects, paid invoices, stuff like that. I'll just sort out in the little folder section. You can pin emails uh, and they have this really unique way of sorting emails. So if they detect that it's from a personal email, it'll put it under people. Then if it's like a notification of like, a, let's say FedEx sends you a tracking notification, it'll pop up under like uh, notifications. It still shows the email, but it's like a subcategory called notification. It's very, very interesting. I use that. You don't have to use that. That's the default setting, but you can change it to just sort of a classic layout of an email client. I like it. It's clean. It's simple. Um, you can do basically anything. There's sort of a team integration where you can add different domains and share stuff. So that's what I'm saying. It's like as advanced as you want it to be or as simple as you want it to be. I use it very bare bones, very simple. I, I just use the sort of base as simple as it can be sort of approach to it. You can add different accounts. Uh, like I said, teams, you can add sort of collaborators. There's also a bunch of different apps you can integrate into it. Zoom, uh, Evernote, OneNote, To-Do List, Things just a bunch of different little things. You can also schedule stuff. It's, you can do some digging and, and spend some, a decent amount of time sort of figuring out how you want to use it. So, uh, it's free. So go ahead, try it out if you like it. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it, uh, but it is a very good email app. That's my favorite. I've been using it for about a year and a half, maybe even two years. I just, there's no reason to go look for any other email client. I love it. The icon looks great. No complaints at all. So that's Spark. It's free on the Mac App Store. And uh, try it out. And let me know what you think in the comments. Next one, 
a lot of people have heard of this one it's discord so discord is has become one of the most popular apps for anything basically for just communication in general communities stuff like that i use it for my own personal use and professional use i'll i have my own little discord server with basically just me in it uh i'll store at the really i'll store assets see i was going perfectly fine through this whole video and then i had to just mess up i'll i'll store certain assets here like I have my business card uh, design that I saved here. I have certain links that I might want to share to customers or, you know, delivery links, stuff like that, extras. I have a wallpaper section where I store all the wallpapers I, I like. So that's sort of like a recreational use. Uh, tools, a bunch of, you know, DaVinci Resolve tutorials, because that's what I used to edit these videos. So I'll store that in one channel. Um, because oftentimes it's so advanced, such an advanced video editing software where I'll just forget how to do things that I haven't done in a while. So I just save the tutorials there in case I ever need to go back. It's all in one spot. So that's that's what I use Discord for mainly. I do use it, of course, recreation, recreationally, gaming, talking with uh, like voice chat and for games and stuff. So, you know, but the primary use is this personal server of mine where I just sort out all my work things or, uh, hobby things like this youtube channel or instagram stuff like that of course discord is free there's a paid option i don't use it it is completely free um and you can get that on their website but you probably heard of discord you probably already have it but that is one app that i basically can't live without because i, I do sort a lot of my things uh, uh, through channels of discord uh, on my server next one now this is an app that's become very popular amongst any every industry uh for planning things team teamwork collabs uh team organization stuff like that delegating tasks within teams and this app is notion so like i said it's gotten very popular i'm sure you've seen a lot of videos i'm sure in the recommended of this video that you're watching there's going to be uh notion tutorials or notion productivity uh templates stuff like that i've watched a few of them they're good videos honestly uh, look them up. You can spend hours just figuring out and exploring Notion. So I use it very simply, um, you know, planning out YouTube videos, jotting down ideas, my uh, freelance workflow, schedule, basic stuff like that. You can, like I said, you can make it as complex or as simple as you want. You should download it. It's free, of course, uh, off their website. It's not on the Mac App Store, but it is a highly recommended app. There's really no other app like it in terms of note taking or planning and uh i would just really uh, give it a shot it's very very good and then watch a few videos you know there's a lot of tutorials out there if you want to do a certain thing just look up how to do it da, 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 whatever on notion and you'll find at least like 10 videos that'll help you and you probably need to watch one but you'll find a bunch bunch of videos that can help you next one now this is something i use for backup of client work or archived photos of mine. I have everything backed up on hard drives, uh, time machine backups of the whole computer. Like there's, I have contingencies in place for this. So one of these is using an app called Chronosync Express. It's available on the Mac App Store. It is paid. It's 25 bucks. Very, very worth it. 25 US, I think, but it's very, very worth it. Uh, you could set it to, once you open the app, you can create sort of like, uh, select a folder sort of like rules so select a folder let's say here i have my photos folder back up to um you plug in an external hard drive and you select it if you start running these rules without that hard drive selected obviously it's not going to work so let's say i plug in my two terabyte hard drive i want to back up my client work i click client work backup that's what i titled it uh, and then it'll start backing up onto that external hard drive so you can make again you can make this very complex saying, I want it to do this. I want it to delete stuff. I just make it very simply add everything that's new from here and put it on this hard drive. You can make it so that it syncs it perfectly. Meaning let's say you have three pictures on your external hard drive, three pictures in your photos folder and you delete two pictures from the photos folder. And now it'll duplicate it and delete those exact two off the hard drive. So now that doesn't work for backing up because you want just new folders, new files, immediately and only put on that hard drive you don't want anything deleted from the hard drive so like i said 
You can make it as complex as you want. The synchronization uh, is very easy. You just, I select the folder. I say, I want this stuff put on this hard drive. Uh, and I don't want you to delete anything. I just want you to put new files and put it on there. It works perfectly fine. Never had an issue. Again, I've been using this for at least a year uh, and it works beautifully. It's worth every penny, if not more. You know, like I would have paid more for this. It's such a great app, makes everything easy uh, and you can back up and sort it however you want. Again, that's on the Mac App Store, 25 US. Uh, the next app is free but has a paid yearly subscription plan. It is another note-taking app, similar to Notion, although a lot simpler. Uh, that's called Bear. It's available on the Mac App Store and also on uh, iOS. Now, the reason I mentioned the iOS app is because with the yearly subscription, you can have iCloud backup and sync across devices. So I originally found Bear through just my iPhone App Store. I was like, I need another a better note taking app. I don't like the Apple uh, stock notes app. So I decided to go on the Mac App Store, found Bear, really liked it. And then I noticed to have a Mac App Store version. So tried that out, it was great. Now I'm like, okay, I need these to sync. And uh, that's what I did. I paid the yearly subscription. It's 15 US dollars a year. I think it's very worth it for what I use it for. You know, 15 bucks for a whole year of this usage for an app I use constantly. Uh, is uh, more than fine with me. So again, you could try the free version and then make a decision. If you don't use, uh, if you, if you just want to use it as a plain notes app, then the free version is, is definitely more than enough to, to have it there just to write down reminders or something like that is perfectly fine. Uh, I use it to track certain things, you know, like I'll jot down notes and then update it. I have a bunch of different folders here, but it's a great, a great notes app. So try the free version out and then, you know, see how much you use it. And uh, again, let me know what you think of all these apps. This was a quick video. You know, it's probably 10 minutes. Every time I say a quick video, it ends up being a very long video. All these apps are really, really great. They're at least the bare minimum I need to get anything done. You know, send emails, write down notes, plan stuff out. It's kind of really the bare minimum you need when it comes to doing anything you want. If you're in, if you're taking pictures, videos, writing, like any sort of profession, uh, sort of benefit from this. Everybody sends emails, even if you're using it personally, the app's great for, in terms of minimalism and functionality, the note taking and reminders, everyone has stuff to write down, schedules to plan, stuff like that. So all these are great little uh, app to try if, if you're interested in this, because I know, you know, some people might not want to download more stuff, but anyway, this is my little video about five Mac apps I can't live without. Hope you enjoyed the next video. We'll see when it comes out, but I'm thinking of having sort of a desk thing, items you can keep on your desk that'll help you do stuff, get work done, whatever. Anyway, so I hope you're going to look forward to that. Subscribe if you're interested in that. Like this video. And uh, again, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and peace out.